Hi, welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome back. If you're a subscriber, Welcome to the Summerween vlog. I love this readathon so, so much. It's put together by Gabby from Gabby Reads, and also her sister Rachel helps so much with the readathon. I am actually wearing the merch for it right now, one of the options. It's this absolutely adorable shirt where this ghost is driving a motorhome, and I'm obsessed with it. I think this is my favorite merch out of all the summer weens, so I'm so excited to have it. But like I said, this readathon is so fun. Gabby created such an amazing readathon, and I want to read out the prompts. So I actually have the little graphic here on my phone. I don't know if you'll be able to see it very well. But it says, read a book in the dark, read a thriller or horror book, read a book with the night sky on the cover, read a book with five words in the title, and read a book that takes place in the summer. So without further ado, I'm going to roll the footage. Hello, I am coming here from a very, very hot day in June. Oh my gosh, I have fans running everywhere, so I'm sorry if you hear them throughout the vlog, but I wanted to let you know I started Middle of the Night by Riley Sager, and I am excited. So I started it this morning on my ride. So this one is about a man who, when he was a child, he was camping out in their backyard overnight with his best friend, and when he wakes up, there is a slash through the tent and his best friend is missing. And now we're in the present day. I believe he's in his 40s and he is still haunted by that night. Nobody knows what happened. His friend was never found. They all just assumed he was murdered. And he's been put in this really hard position because he literally cannot remember anything. And so you're flashing back to the day leading up to the event, which I love. I love when Riley Sager does that. I think honestly all of his books have flashbacks if I'm remembering right. And I'm loving the atmosphere so far. This is his first book where the main character is a man, which is really interesting. I felt like he has needed to do that for a while because he's written women characters so much. We need him to write a character who's a guy. So. It's super interesting so far. I haven't learned much, but I'm liking the vibes of this one and I feel like it's way more promising than his last book, which I really didn't like, um, the only one left, and also The House Across the Lake. I was really excited for, but I didn't really like where it went with the twist and all of that. I loved all his other books though. So I hope that this falls into me loving the book. I will keep you updated. I'm listening to the audiobook. I have my noise canceling headphones on and I'm trying to stay cool desperately. Our apartment does not have central AC. It just has a wall unit. So it's really difficult to keep up with the heat. And I think there's just such high humidity and heat all across the US right now, but that's okay. I will make it through. <laughs> Hello, happy summerween. So I ended up taking forever to pick back up Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. So I decided that this would be my first summerween read. I read like maybe 30% of it. So I picked up and now I've reached about 50%. So this book I'm having mixed feelings on because there's certain parts I'm really liking and then there's certain parts I'm not liking, which is kind of how I felt about his last book, The Only One Left. I'm liking the atmosphere. This is perfect for Summerween because it fits two prompts, one that takes place in the summer and then also reading a thriller book. So I'm really liking the summer setting. It is told from the perspective of a man, which is the first time he's ever done that. So it's felt a little bit different. I will say I'm listening to the audiobook and the narrator is sort of not fitting the vibe I would like. So the narrator sometimes, especially when he's just doing the voices of neighbors, sounds kind of annoying, which is frustrating because I know that I could read this physically, but right now I just don't have the energy to physically read it, so I need to listen on audio. So I'm just kind of trying to ignore that, but it's very much a is it paranormal, is it not vibe, which I really do love when Riley Sager does this. I just am not sure where the story is going to go. I will say there have been some creepy scenes, so perfect for the Summerween readathon actually. There is a scene where there are lights on the cul-de-sac going off 
like those motion detector lights, but he can't see who it is outside the window. So it's really tense because you're seeing them kind of go off one by one. It just seems like somebody's lurking around the neighborhood. And so it has an eerie atmosphere. I just feel like it's sort of slow paced. I think that's the issue. Like I said, I didn't binge this book or anything. I took a break from it and I haven't felt that urge to pick it back up, which is just a bummer. So I'm really curious to see how it goes. Like I said, I'm not loving it, which kind of sucks, but I still, you know, have 50% left of the book. So I will keep you all updated. And then once I finish this, I will have completed two prompts for Summerween. I am excited that it's Summerween and I will definitely be searching for some books that I will love instead of just kind of feel meh about. I don't know. I don't want to say I'll just feel meh about this book, but I'm kind of feeling that's the direction it's going, unfortunately. Hello, so I have finished Middle of the Night by Riley Sager and you can probably tell by my face I am kind of disappointed by it which I was really really nervous about because like I said earlier I've been kind of disappointed by his last two releases so I was very scared that I would feel the same about this one and I will say I like this much better than the house across the lake and I think I do overall enjoy it more than the only one left as well surprisingly but I think a couple things happened in this that just made me not like it as much and I'll explain those elements and stuff so first of all I want to say this one kind of began with the vibe of like a Stephen King story about something happened in these adults past when they were children and they grew up in this small community and so it had kind of like a Stephen King vibe and in the beginning I was hoping it would go a certain direction it did the kind of like typical Riley Sager is it paranormal is it real which can work for me sometimes with him and it, then it cannot in other times and in this specific one I kind of didn't love it as much I thought it was middle of the road I really really didn't like it in one of his other books and then I really enjoyed that element with like lock every door home before dark and stuff like that so this book I just felt like the main character I did not connect to at all he seemed very just not much personality I would say like I didn't feel a connection and also there was a twist about the character that I saw coming like a mile away and it's probably because I've read so many thrillers but none of the twists in this surprised me I didn't see the very end twist coming but again it didn't surprise me I was kind of like oh okay I see it I thought there were too many twists at the end I know Riley Sager is known for just having like twist upon twist this one it just wasn't as exciting for me because of the direction it took there was something cool also that I felt like was a little bit of a missed opportunity. There's this like mysterious institute that he grew up near and there was a bit of a plot about this and it didn't end in the direction that I wanted as well. It also felt kind of repetitive because this is a trope that doesn't always work for me and it is the amnesia trope and oh my gosh it totally worked in Listen for the Lie for me which was kind of surprising but in this one having just read Listen for the Lie and liking so much more how that one worked out I just didn't love this one I will say I was entertained enough I wasn't like hating my experience reading it so I think I'll give this a middle of the road rating which is making me laugh because it's called middle of the night and I think I'll give it a three star I like some of the ideas and probably my favorite part of the book was learning about the kids in the past so the flashback chapters I much 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 preferred to the present day chapters this one also just felt more like a mystery and less of a thriller it did have the thriller plot twist elements but the majority of the book read more like a mystery this completed my prompt for reading a thriller and reading a book that takes place in the summer so now I have some other prompts to fit so for the next book I need to either read a book in the dark read a book with a night sky on the cover or read a book with five words in the title. So I decided to read One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. I still haven't taken the Target sticker off, which is super annoying, but this one I'm counting as having a night sky on the cover because as you can see, there are waves kind of in the background and then there's a night sky. So I'm excited for this one. I'm also extremely nervous for it because I haven't had a ton of luck with Ruth Ware books in the past. I've been hearing really, really good things about this one. So I will be starting the audiobook 
book tonight. I'm currently doing Patreon sprints and I'm hoping to make a good dent in this book and fingers crossed that it will be higher than a three star and if not, at least a three star read. So I wanted to let you all know what One Perfect Couple is about. I realized I never said what it was about last night, but I got about 75 pages in on sprints and I'm really, really liking it. And now I'm almost at part two, so I'm like 130 pages in. So this one is about a woman named Lila and she's kind of in a rough spot with life. Things with her job are not going well. And also she has this younger boyfriend and things just aren't looking great with them either. They're not in the best place in their relationship. And her boyfriend is this actor. He really, really wants to make it big. And so he gets offered this reality TV show opportunity. And so he has to convince her to go on this island for this reality TV show. He thinks it'll be his big break. And Lila is super not into it, but she decides to go for her boyfriend and they end up taking this ship over to an island. They don't know anything about the format of the show or how it will work and I am loving it so far. There is so much drama already. It's just from the perspective so far of Lila. I hope it stays that way. I am loving the reality TV aspect. The cat is trying to eat my popcorn. I'm actually cat sitting right now. Can you not eat my popcorn, please? Thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm loving the reality TV aspect of it. I've never been somebody who watches like dating reality TV shows. I have seen some of Love is Blind, but I love Vanderpump and some of the Real Housewives and it's just so fun seeing it in a book and I'm liking it so, so, so much more than everyone is watching. I think it's just working a lot better. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm loving the tropical setting. It's kind of reminding me slightly of Reckless Girls. I think maybe it's the writing style coupled with the fact that they're on an island, but something dramatic just happened and I am really excited to get to part two and see what happens. I know that there's gonna be a storm, it says so in the synopsis, and that they'll be stuck there. And also you're getting radio messages in the beginning of each chapter where they're saying, we need help, SOS, people are dead and stuff like that. So I know something drastic is coming. Hey, so I wanted to jump on here and let you know my final thoughts on one Perfect Couple. I did finish it and I actually really enjoyed it. I'm ending up giving it probably four stars. I thought it was slightly too long and the ending was a little lackluster. I was kind of expecting it to go a certain route that a lot of reality TV show books go, which could be pretty tropey, but also I usually like it happening. I'm trying to be really vague but the ending just kind of let me down a little bit, but the ride was really great. I liked how it started out with all the reality TV show elements where they're starting to film on the island, but then it quickly switches over to mainly a survival story, which was really fun. I love survival stories. They're some of my favorites to read. I will say that I actually cared about a lot of the characters in this, which was surprising to me. There was some abuse that was happening, which was hard to read about. And I got so, so angry at some of the characters, um, specifically one character. But I really was happy with this. This is my favorite Ruth Ware I've ever read. I did read The Turn of the Key, which I didn't like as much as most people, unfortunately. I know some people love, love, love that book. Actually, I think it's like most people's favorite Ruth Ware book, but that one just didn't work very well for me. And then I read One by One. Those are the only two I've read by Ruth Ware. But I think why this one worked so well for me was because it had a lot of elements that I really love in books. The reality TV show element, the kind of one by one people are being picked off element that I generally like. Also the survival element. So I think that's why this one worked really well for me. So I'm not sure if her other books would work, but who knows? Let me know in the comments if you think, since I like this Ruth Ware book, I should try another one that has similar elements or just a similar vibe. The last book I'm counting for this readathon is The Exorcist. And I actually can't believe I have never read this book before. Now, my story with reading this is I started it about a month ago, but then I kept needing to read books for book clubs. So I was putting it aside and I was really, really enjoying the first, I would say half of this so much. I thought it was super eerie and creepy. If you don't know what this is about, it's about a little girl who is seemingly becoming possessed by a demon 
and the mother is so worried about her. She's trying to take her to doctors. She ends up reaching out to this priest to perform an exorcism. And you're just watching this little girl who transform as she's being possessed and it's really scary. My favorite part of the book was more towards the beginning when the girl is starting to seem different and then do really really creepy things that was super unnerving to read about i think where it lost me a little bit was when we switch over more to the priest's perspective and we're learning about him and his backstory i just didn't really care about it and it became a little bit less about the girl and more about this man and his faith and so i struggle to rate this because i was really loving it in the beginning and there were some really chilling scenes that were scary I think I'm going to settle on a four stars just because I really, really loved kind of the more early on scenes and the scenes of possession were really creepy with Reagan specifically towards the beginning of it. But really my enjoyment decreased a lot. So I will say if you read this one, definitely listen to the audiobook. It's narrated by the author and there were some really creepy voices that were done and effects in it that I really enjoyed. And I also think it's cool that the author read it because you know exactly how he wanted the book to sound and all of that. So I like that aspect of it. This one I'm counting for the prompts as reading in the dark because every single time I read this book it was at night. And so this was my final book for the readathon. Here is my little Summerween journal spread. I absolutely love the stickers and artwork that Rachel does. She was so kind to send these to me so thank you so so much Rachel. But I put some of the stickers that she sent over on this journal. And then I put the books that I read during the readathon with their star ratings. And then over here, I still need to go in and write the prompts. But I really like how it turned out. I like the color scheme. And again, Rachel's artwork is just absolutely stunning. I also wanted to say that I did watch two horror movies during the readathon. So I watched The Exorcist right after I finished it. I can't believe I've never seen that movie. It was very well done. I definitely do still prefer the book to the movie, but I'm super glad that I finally watched it and I could see why it became such an iconic influence in the genre and how so many other possession movies were based off of it. So it was really cool to see the source material for so many movies that I really like following. And then I watched Pearl and it's the second movie after X and they just released Maxine which I still need to watch but I really really liked X and I watched Pearl and really enjoyed it as well. It's really hard for me to decide which one I liked better. They were stylized very differently but oh my gosh it was so good. Mia Goth's acting is just out of this world. She is so, so skilled at acting. I also kind of felt bad for Pearl, which was a very interesting feeling to feel bad for a horror movie villain, <laughs> but I really loved it. I thought the music was amazing. Like I said, the stylization was awesome. I loved it so much. I don't really have much more to say. I don't want to get into spoilers, but I can't wait to watch Maxine. I'm a little bit nervous that I'm not going to like Maxine as much as Pearl and X. I really need to rewatch X as well. I just saw it once in theaters, but I can't wait to watch Maxine whenever I am able to. So I'm here to share my wrap up for the readathon and sorry that this vlog took a little while to get out. I'm actually currently sick right now and so it's pushed everything back. But for the prompts, the first one is read a book in the dark and I'm counting The Exorcist to fit this prompt because every single time I read it, I read the book in the dark. For read a thriller or horror book, I'm going to count either The Exorcist as the horror book or One Perfect Couple as the thriller book. For read a book with the night sky on the cover, I'm counting One Perfect Couple. Now the only one I didn't get to was read a book with five words in the cover, which is a bummer, but oh well, I got all the other prompts. And then for reading a book that takes place in the summer, I'm going to count middle of the night. I had so much fun with this readathon. I hope you enjoyed watching my thoughts with all the books. And I honestly can't wait until Summerween next year and all the ween readathons are just so much fun. If you got this far in the video, please leave a ghost emoji to let me know you watched to the end. And I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.